Hello, my name is Leonard Apeltsen. I'm a data scientist living in the Bay Area. And for the past few months, I've been hunting treasure. In 2010, an eccentric 80-year-old multimillionaire named Forrest Fenn hid a treasure somewhere out there in the Rocky Mountains. Uh, the treasure is estimated to be worth at about $3 million. There's jewels and gemstones and a bunch of ancient gold hidden in this beautiful antique 15th century bronze treasure chest. Fenn encoded the location to that treasure chest in a single cryptic poem that he published in his autobiography, The Thrill of the Chase. Begin it where warm waters halt and take it in the canyon down. Not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. From there, there's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There will be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water's high. But if you're wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But tarry scant with marvel gaze, and just take the chest and go in peace. I learned about Forrest Fenn and his treasure on the internet, as one does. I read about Fenn's story and the poem, and I thought, this is ridiculous. But then I read the poem a couple times, and I started thinking about it, and I go, okay, I got this, you know. You know, I don't think it's that hard. I think I can crack it. There were some nights when I, I, couldn't, I couldn't sleep. I would go to bed and suddenly an idea or a clue would pop up and I would get out of bed and I would scour maps and look online and think real hard. And then I would finally get into bed and close my eyes and think about the poem till morning. I study the archives. I look up ancient hundred-year-old blueprints of territories. I try to crack all the pieces, trying to crack everything together, analyzing maps, analyzing satellite imagery. I discover it. I see how the pieces all work. Let's explore the clues in Forrest Fenn's poem one by one. Now the first and the most important clue is begin where the warm waters halt. I, was, I remember after one sleepless night, I was rereading a line in the book where Forrest Fenn refers to an Indiana Jones type that will find the treasure someday. And I thought to myself, look at me, I'm no Indiana Jones. Indiana Jones wouldn't look at random reservoirs and random tributaries of rivers. Indiana Jones would get into a plane and fly someplace amazing. And that's when it hit me. Behind me are warm waters rising up as vapor over the bay, going up until they halt in the sky becoming soft and fluffy clouds. That is where warm waters halt, the sky, and the sky is where we will begin. Forrest Fenn has always insisted that the treasure hunt should be a family endeavor, bringing families closer together, which is why I'm taking my mother, Irina, and my stepfather, Victor, out on the treasure hunt with me. It is Victor's birthday on the day of the hunt, and I, can't I can think of no better present than to find a treasure chest for him and for all of us to share together as a family. Begin where the warm waters hold means begin in the sky. Get into a plane and fly into the sky. Now at first that seems ridiculous and absurd. The sky is huge and limitless. How do you go from the immense sky to a single position on the map? For that, we have to examine the next clue and take it in the canyon down. Land the plane on an airstrip in or next to a canyon. Not far, but too far to walk. Yeah, you can't walk there, you have to fly your plane. Put in below the home of Brown. I have examined hundreds of airstrips on government land, carefully marking down each and every one, taking down its name, elevation, latitude and longitude, and most importantly, whether it's located in or near a canyon of any sort. And check out what happens when we sort this list of airports by, by canyons. 
Boom! There it is. Two airstrips on government land near Gateway, Colorado, both located near John Brown Canyon. Ladies and gentlemen, we have found the home of Brown. We are off the main road now and off the grid. Let's hope that this Jeep has what it takes to uh, overcome any obstacles that we may encounter. Oh my god. This is not a fun adventure. We're going near the very steep cliff and very close to the edge and I, I think it's dangerous. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's only 20 do. minutes, 20 it's more minutes. It's a long 20 minutes. I don't think I can play. Be careful when you take your mother treasure hunting. Since the book has been published, hundreds of thousands of seekers have headed out into the mountains looking for gold and glory. Some have taken risks that have cost them their lives. Five people that we know of have perished so far. I will, I will be very happy when it's gonna be over, seriously. But I'm here and I have to survive to see the end of that. <laughs> Otherwise I would have heart attack in three minutes. <laughs> I'm gonna say my mother is a natural born treasure hunter. We are now entering the heart of America's uranium country. A hundred years ago, this was one of the top spots to mine uranium in the United States. Lots of mines were established in the area, and after the invention of the airplane, a bunch of tiny airstrips were built in very remote locations so that miners could deliver their supplies more easily. One such airstrip is located about two miles in that direction. In the inside cover of Thrill of the Chase, Forrest Fenn writes, that if you have confidence in a maverick, you will find the treasure. And the canyon where we will seek our treasure is called Little Maverick Canyon. It all connects. Last two miles are my only concern because according to Google Maps, the name of this road is un Unnamed Road. So fingers crossed, everything will be okay. Otherwise, we'll have to find an alternative form of transport to get to the destination. This is very shaky road <laughs> and it, I'm thinking what's going to happen first. Either I'm going to throw up or fall out of the car. Stop. I think we've gone too far. This is okay, okay, this is it. Okay, let's stop. Let's stop. Let's this stop. looks like the key. Look at Google Earth. The airstrip is someplace that way and you can you know our location. In the middle of nowhere, surrounded by no people, no civilization, just pine trees perched at the edge of Maverick Canyon. It is here where we will find Fenn's treasure. From there, there's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek. There's gonna be a creek near the landing spot, but you can't paddle up it. Just heavy loads, AKA heavy sediment loads, dry riverbed, and water high. When the creek is not dry, when it's overflowing, you see a waterfall going down creek. What we are looking for is a dry or semi-dry creek where the creek bed is exposed and the heavy loads, the big rocks at the bottom of the creek bed are fully visible. This is much harder than I thought it would be. See, it's sim so simple. Looking over the map, you go here, 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 and you're in the, the exact spot. But it turns out that finding an exact point in the wilderness is like finding a needle in the haystack. Even when you know exactly where you need to go, you'll still wind up wandering in the wrong place. We, 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 we are right here, 3548, which uh, means... Which means... Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go. Okay, we did it. We're a little less lost than we were 10 minutes ago. And it's all thanks to maps and Google Earth satellite imagery and GPS. If we go that way, we will see the turnoff. Ah, okay, I see. I think that, um, 
Yeah, yeah, that, that turn off towards uh, towards yeah. the airstrip. Okay, uh, so according to my GPS, this is the corner. Let's just examine it a little bit without going too far. This is a dry creek bed, which makes sense. Well, we are supposed to find the dry creek. The question is, is this the right dry creek? So if you look at the map, this, uh, the path will, there's a path that winds all the way up to the airstrip. This looks like the right place. Yeah, so this is the creek that Forrest Fenn wrote about in his poem. There will be no paddle up the creek. Mm -hmm. So there, you can't paddle up this creek. Okay. Uh, for Forrest Fenn, uh, when describing the location of the treasure, said the treasure is found in the place where there are mountains, there are animals, and there's the smell of pinyon pines, like the pinyon pine right here. Uh, this area seems like it's the right spot, not because of the, not only because of the perfect latitude and longitude, but also because it fits the description. And this is the first view of mountains that we saw in a while. So I think we're really, really close to the right location. To me, the treasure hunt is not just about the gold. It's also about people and, and family. And I'm really glad that I have the opportunity to uh, let my family take a part in what for me is a very special moment in my life. Love them all. Help, happiness, and love. And adventure. And adventure. Yeah. I'm out looking for the treasure, not just because of the gold, but because of the the thrill. I think it's beautiful that there's gold hidden away someplace and someone can find it. I think it, may, it makes the world a more magical place. But if you're wise and found the blaze... In order to find the blaze, we must examine the map around the airstrip. According to the map, there's a territorial boundary that cuts across the airstrip. That territorial boundary intersects with the creek that we found yesterday. If we look at the corner of the boundary on the map, we see the symbol WC. WC stands for Witness Corner. A Witness Corner is a tree that has been deformed in some way to mark the corner of the boundary. This type of tree is called the blazed tree. Sometimes a blazed tree has been bent at a 90 degree angle, so it rows horizontally. This is what Indians used to do back in their day to mark the boundaries of their territories. So it's day two of our search. We haven't slept all night last night, looking over maps, correcting uh, mistakes, illuminating errors, and now we know the exact location of the territory boundary, where we will look for the blaze. Right here. Now, we are either looking for a tree with a blaze or a rock with a blaze. I had initially suspected this was a tree, but the trees here are a little puny. A lot of trees have fallen over. That's a bit disconcerting. Some of these trees are not looking like they're in good shape, which means if the blaze wasn't a tree, it's quite possible that the tree has uh, already collapsed. <sighs> we had a long and fruitless search, but no blaze. <sighs> but we did find this comfortable rock couch, which is better than nothing. At this point, it wasn't even about the treasure. It was about finding the blaze that is demarcated on the map. They couldn't even find that. We might find another point in the airstrip. Honestly, I don't know. I'll look over the maps at this point, but we'll see. What happens, happens.
uh, how much of what I'm seeing is actually logical and how much of it is just me seeing animals in the clouds above my head. Am I just seeing random patterns that aren't there or have I truly cracked the meaning of the poem? Honestly, it could be a little bit of both. Just a smell. Fire coming closer to this place. Okay. So I would like to get out of here as soon as possible. This is the Calamity Mesa airstrip. We had to climb up here by foot and leave the Jeep behind because the road got too rough. Theoretically, at that edge, based on the map, is a dried up waterfall. We'll have a quick look and then we have to go and turn around because mother is very worried in the car. We confirmed uh, the latitude and longitude coordinates at the intersection of the airstrip and the road, exactly as we had determined on Google Maps, exactly where the boundary is located. All our calculations were perfect. Everything was perfect except for one thing. There was no witness corner. There was no blaze, the map had lied. But our calculations were not wrong. Our data was simply not right. We uh, visited uh, the top of the airstrip and confirmed our hypothesis that the intersection of the airstrip and the road is exactly in the territory boundary as we predicted using Google Earth. So we are doing one last ditch Hail Mary effort to find the witness corner and go home content that we did everything we could to find this damn thing. So let's do it. And yeah, definitely not these trees here. Let's keep going up. Victor sees a big tree up there. Could be pretty old. What we're looking for will be obviously man-made. Mom, over here, over here. We found this, a bent tree. This bent tree is not natural. In the old days, the Indians would used to leave trail markers by forcing saplings to grow in a certain direction at an angle, uh, designating a territorial marking a boundary or boundary. And it is exactly where we expected to find some sort of marking. If you are wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But Terry scant, scant meaning stone, Terry scant with marvel gaze, just take the chest and go in peace. Assuming this is the blaze, I'm looking quickly downward and I see a stone on the boundary marking right in front of me. Is it possible that the chest has been buried here? Let's try it from this angle. Let's look quickly down from this angle, down the boundary. Look quickly down your quest to cease. I'm looking down your quest for the treasure chest. I don't see anything special looking down in this direction. This Indian trail blaze is the only blaze we found, and it's better than nothing. Uh, so we're gonna get out our shovels and start digging because we don't yeah. have a choice. Don't, don't put it in the dirt, okay? The shovel. Ni nothing. I know you're excited, but... My mother's concerned that we don't get too dirty while digging up the treasure. Yeah, stay clean. <laughs> and that is my fear. That is what keeps me up at night. Not that I am wrong about the treasure, but that I am right. That I'm 99% this close to finding the treasure. And then I walk on right by while the gold is within smelling distance. We have multiple theories where the treasure is located. One is that it's located near the tree. Another is that it's located near the stone that we see when okay. you look down. I don't think it's under the tree because it's much easier for 80 years old man. Dig somewhere here. No, but it's easy to dig here. No, no it's not. It's, very it's not. This is actually, it's not. It's hard to dig by a tree. 
Yeah, this is hard earth. Oh, I got something. No, you don't. It's a, it's a stone. Oh, it's stone. Is it? Well, well, shiny stone. You know, I started out thinking scientifically, trying to decipher the exact location of the treasure, giving the clues. And the next thing I know, I'm going crazy, digging one spot after the other, digging at every first flat stone I can find, all thoughts of the scientific method, flying out the window, and knowing the drive, the thirst for the gold, knowing that it's there for the taking. And the next thing I know, I'm tired and I'm sweaty and I'm covered with dust, and there's no treasure. <sighs> And I do have a little bit of doubt. What if be miscalculated? What if it was only 20, 30, 10 feet off? Because I failed to interpret one single cleverly placed clue. What if have to... Th but no, you know what? You can drive yourself crazy thinking these things. You can spend year after year, decade after decade, your whole lifetime digging around one particular spot, driven mad by the gold, never finding anything, just driven by your thirst for the gold, driven by the addiction, driven by the need to discover, the need for the adventure, driven by your addiction to the gold. I think that as a family, we make an amazing team and there's no puzzle we can't crack and there's no treasure we can't find with enough willpower smarts and moxie so let's and money that. and money <laughs> hey that money will pay for itself when for the treasure's for ours for adventures yes for us for to us, us right? to us to family to family a la familia <laughs> 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 <laughs>